Today we're going to take a look at installing Rails on Windows. Now we're going to be doing this using WSL. For those of you that are familiar, it is technically running on Linux, but we'll get to that in a second. The reason why we're doing it this way is because the actual Windows bindings for Rails are just a miserable experience and you will just constantly run into problems where you have to switch out a gem or a plugin for a different one on your Linux uh, PC. And then when you go to like put it on a server so that you can actually have a website, you uh, then have to switch back to the previous one that came with Rails. And when you're switching between these dependencies, things just, they end up breaking, you waste a whole bunch of time. Not to mention the fact that it's really not documented how to work on Windows because we've just sort of abandoned it. So instead we're gonna be covering how to set up a small little Linux box like this one so that you can just run Rails commands out of here and run your Rails server in here. And honestly, it's helpful for more than just developing with Rails. So the actual setup process is gonna be pretty simple. You're just gonna to go to your search menu and you're just gonna search for turn Windows features on or off and then hit enter. Once you get to this page, you're gonna to wanna to come all the way down to the bottom and you're gonna to wanna to have the virtual machine platform enabled. Uh, I don't know if you need PowerShell 2.0, but you probably want that enabled. You're gonna want the Windows subsystem for Linux enabled. Really the two you want are the subsystem for Linux and the uh, virtual machine platform. I actually didn't have the hypervisor platform enabled, but you probably wanna have that enabled as well. So this one, this one, and this one. Once that's done, you can click OK. It'll go through, install the packages, and it'll tell you that you have to restart your PC. So now I'm assuming you've had it installed. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go over to your search menu and just search for the Microsoft Store. This is the cringy Windows Store that advertises Raid Shadow Legends for some reason, not sponsored by the way. Uh, and then once you're in here, you're just gonna to wanna to search for whatever your Linux distribution that you wanna use is. Some people might wanna use Kali Linux because they like to pretend that they know how to hack. Uh, and other people like to use stuff like Ubuntu which is what I'm personally gonna use because it's what I've been using. In my case, I'm gonna go with the 22.04 because that is the latest long-term support. And then I'm just gonna click get. This is just gonna go ahead and install an entire Linux distribution onto your Windows PC. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to do while you're in here is you're gonna to wanna to search for the Windows terminal. And that should pop up with this little icon here. And then you can come over to the Windows terminal and you're gonna to wanna to just click download or open or whatever. And I personally like this a lot more than the command prompt or the PowerShell. That's what this window is right here. You just get a little drop down arrow, you can click on it and it lets you open up all the different things you have on your computer. So I have like Git Bash installed because I have a Windows Git uh, development environment set up. And I have the regular old Ubuntu that I work in for my Rails tutorials. I also have a PowerShell instance here. If I click on it, it just opens a new tab. I can also hit like Control Shift T to open up my default tab, which is my Ubuntu installation. Once that's done, we uh, can then come over here and we're just gonna wanna wait until we have the latest Ubuntu set up, which should be downloading right now. So if I come back over to the Ubuntu 20.04 or the 22.04 and I click on open, this will open up a Linux uh, panel and this will be the actual installation getting started page. It's now gonna take us over to the terminal, I believe. And inside of the actual terminal, it should then uh, have us go through the setup process. So in this case, I'm gonna look for English. I'm gonna hit enter. I'm gonna set my name. I'm gonna pick a username. I'm gonna set a password. And I guess it doesn't like my username, so I'm just gonna make it a lowercase. I'll hit enter, 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 and then enter. It's gonna ask for a mount location. That's totally fine. I'm just gonna go with the default here, which is slash MNT and then it should go through the setup. Now that we're done here, it should, uh, it'll tell us we can reboot now. The other thing we can do is just click on the down arrow and just open up our Ubuntu session. Once you're at this point, the instructions for this tutorial might change, but what's important is now you're technically just inside of an Ubuntu instance. At this point, you can follow any other getting started guide for setting up Rails on Linux, and it should be roughly the same. So maybe what you want to do is you want to set up Rails with something like RVM or RBENV or whatever, some kind of Ruby version manager. In which case you just go over to Google, you just search for setup uh, RBENV on uh, Linux, I guess Ubuntu. And then you'll just look for an updated guide, something that came from like the previous year or so. And then you can just scroll through it and hopefully follow along with whatever the steps are. Most cases, it's gonna tell you to run a sudo apt update. It'll then uh, pull the latest versions. 
and then you can run a uh, whatever this command is right here. So I'll have a link to this tutorial in the video description just in case this works. So I'm gonna go ahead, right click this and paste it in, hit Y to uh, continue. And of course, while we're going through this, I can uh, walk you through some of the settings. So if you come over to the uh, little drop down menu, you can come down to your settings and this will pop open a Windows uh, window, I guess. And in here you can just go through and configure however you want this to work. Personally, I set the default terminal application to be the Windows terminal because I don't really use anything else. And then I usually come into the appearance and I just mess around with the appearance a bit until I get something that I like. So maybe the color schemes as well to change this around. Once that's working, you'll then have something similar to this. It's good to go. It's a little bit upset about the kernel versions, but that's fine. So let's take this, pop it down here and keep going. We'll then copy some more of these commands, paste them in and we'll just keep going. So this should mostly work. Uh, I think RBENV is usually a little bit easier than running the RVM installer. And of course, I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. I'm just uh, running through this and pretending like I know what I'm doing. So that seems like it's good. Uh, now we just wanna grab the uh, Ruby build plugin. So we'll grab that, paste it in. We can then run a cat for that and that'll spit something out, come down here and we'll just keep going. So one thing I do want to point out after we're done with this uh, installation process is uh, whatever the latest RBENV is here. So we're going to want to run the RBENV install. And we want to grab this 3.1.2. One thing to note, I'm going to hit the uh, little drop down to open up another Ubuntu 20.0 or 22. I'm going to hit control plus a bunch of times so you can see what I'm typing. You're going to want to go to your root. So CD slash, you can then type LL to see what's inside of your root. You can see here, it's a bunch of stuff. And the one thing that we want to do at this root is do a uh, make dir, and we want to make a code directory. We can then CD into the code directory, type LL. And the reason why we CD into this code directory specifically is we want to put all of our code at the root level here because if you have your code, like let's say inside of a directory that's shared with Windows, so it's inside of your C directory, which might be something like in your slash MNT slash C slash users, for example, if it's in there, because it shares the file system with Windows, this is gonna be horrendously slow. So you wanna make sure that you're in a separate Linux only directory here, like this code directory. And then once you're in here, you can do something like make dir for Rails, CD into your Rails directory. And then in here, just do all of your new Rails projects once this installer is done. Now the Ruby installer is gonna take a while, so we're just gonna sit here and wait for this to finish. And then I'll cut to whenever it's done installing. All right, so we've now finished installing the Ruby version. Now we just wanna grab this command to set, uh, I guess not this one, we wanna set the global RBENV version to be 3.1.2. So we can just go ahead and copy this command to an extent. And then at this point, we should be able to type ruby-v to see that we're running the latest version of Ruby as of this recording. Now at this point, you can pretty much just go ahead and uh, install Rails, I guess. So you can just do a gem install Rails and that should grab the latest version of Rails. I don't know if this uh, specifically covers it. Yeah, it looks like it does. So this was for Rails 6. I'm of course running Rails 7 now. It'll just go through and install all of the gems. After this is done, we're pretty much good to go in terms of running a basic Rails installation. Now I should note, you're gonna have a couple things you wanna do. You'll wanna set up like Visual Studio Code with some extensions. Um, I have a link to the extensions I use, including all of my autocomplete. I'll have that in the video description. Uh, another thing that you might wanna take a look at is uh, like installing Postgres because uh, some tutorials are gonna have you start by setting up a Postgres database instead of a SQLite database because people prefer to run their development and their production out off the same database. That way you don't have to like change whatever your commands are. But okay, we now have uh, Rails installed. So let me just type Rails-V and we can see we're on Rails 7.0.3.1. Now what I'm gonna try and do is type a code dot and it looks like it's installing Visual Studio Code Server. So I think you might need to have VS Code installed on your machine to begin with, maybe. Uh, but if not, it looks like we're good here. 
And if I come down to my extensions, it looks like I lost uh, a lot of my extensions here maybe. But if I come down to my extensions and I search for GitHub Copilot, I can see if that's still installed. Yeah, so it looks like I have to reinstall my extensions in the latest version. But basically you just go through here, you install this. And in the bottom left here, let me actually minimize this a little bit so you can see it. You'll see you have this little thing here that says WSL Ubuntu 22.04. That's just showing you that you're integrated between your Windows and your uh, Linux distribution. So you can switch between the two if you need to. Now, the other thing we can do uh, which I don't really see covered a lot, but we can cover it real quick, is we can actually come in here and search for GWSL. And this is going to allow you to open up your uh, Linux apps on your computer if you'd like to. So this is gonna give you an entire GUI to open up uh, Linux applications and run them on your Windows PC. So I did see one tutorial, I have a link to it in the video description, where someone set this up and they installed like LibreOffice and they ran it through this uh, little, little program. I don't really know if that's necessary for you if you're running on Windows because you probably have access to like Microsoft Word. Um, but if you don't, you know, you always have access to this as an option. The reason why I like it personally is because go through the 20 different permissions as it just roots its way into my computer. Yes, it's it's okay. That's why I hit allow the first time. So if we click on this, we can come over to yeah, click OK. We can come over to like our Linux apps if we would like to. You can see different Linux applications here. Uh, let me actually go to the 22.04. So in here I can click on like the file explorer, for example, and this will on my other window, just open the window or the Linux file explorer in a windows file explorer session. So you can see here, this is my uh, code directory we just created with the rails directory and there's nothing in here. So let's go ahead, let's make a new rails app inside of our code directory. So I'm going to type CD slash code and slash rails. And then in here, I'm just going to type rails new hello dash world to create a hello world blog. I'll go ahead and run that. It'll run the bundler and all that other stuff. And hopefully this will work. Okay, so here we can see we're missing the SQLite gem. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's try a uh, sudo apt install lib SQLite 3 dash dev. Okay, and now let's try to run the bundle install command again. Okay, so SQLite installed. It looks like it was upset about that. Now, the other thing you might need, uh, let me just go ahead and search for it, uh, but we can try this real quick. I'm gonna try to run a Rails S real quick and see if this works. Looks like it did. So now we can go to localhost port 3000 in our browser and it'll work just fine. So this will connect to our Linux distribution. At this point, you're pretty much set. You can like leave at this point. Uh, just a couple other things you might want to be aware of. Sometimes you might run across a tutorial that has you use something like ES build, in which case you're going to want to do a, uh, you're going to want to install node and yarn. So node and yarn are pretty self-explanatory to install. It's just going to be something like sudo apt install node.js and you're going to want to install yarn as well. Uh, there, there might be some, some specific configurations for that, but that's the general idea. The other one you're going to want to look at is setting up Postgres QL. So you're going to want to go to Google and just search for like Postgres setup Ubuntu and just try and find something similar. Like it looks like I clicked on this one two years ago and just try and find something that roughly covers the instructions for how to set it up. Now, generally the issue with Postgres setup instructions is you'll go through all of them. You'll have something like a service, PostgreSQL status, and it'll tell you, in this case, it's online, but a lot of times it'll be offline. So you'll run your status and it'll be down. And then when you try and run a Rails app, you'll run into errors, even though you have Postgres installed. So if you ever run into an error where Postgres doesn't work for some reason, make sure you run a sudo service uh, PostgreSQL start, just to make sure that you're actually running your database. That's another little gotcha that I run into a lot. But in this case, you're pretty much done. You can go ahead and run a code dot here to open up this specific Rails app. And we can just real quick generate a uh, like a Rails blog, just a quick Hello World Rails blog. So I'm going to type, uh, or I'm going to hit F11, then I'm going to type Rails G scaffold. We'll create a post and we'll give each post a title of type string by default and a body of type text. We can then go ahead and hit enter. That'll generate our scaffold. Now we'll go ahead and run a rails db colon migrate command to migrate our database. And now we can go ahead and run a rails s command to start our server again. 
We can then come over to our config inside of our directory, trust all sources. Of course, we don't have any concept of security. We'll go into config and routes.rb. I'll hit control B to hide the side panel. And then I'll just create a root for the application, which will be the post controller index action. We can go ahead and save that, come over to our localhost port 3000, refresh. And now we are successfully inside of a brand new scaffolded Rails app. So I'll say, hello world. This is my first post. I'll hit create post. And you can see we now have this post inside of our database. So whenever we refresh the page, it'll run the select uh, post star from posts. And I mean, that's pretty much it. You're, you're good to go. You can now start following all the other Rails tutorials and it should work just like how you would expect. Now, a couple of closing thoughts, uh, one of which um, you'll probably see some comments on this video, even where people try to tell you don't use WSL, just go install Linux instead. And all I have to say is I've been using WSL to make like 200 plus Rails tutorials and it's worked just fine. Uh, you just SSH into your remote servers through your Linux installation. And as long as you're not trying to run your actual server for like your website off of your little Linux box here, you're fine. This is great for development, not good for production. Obviously, you don't want to have to run your computer to host your server to begin with. So hopefully this was helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next video.